Today we're going to service an IBC SL28160 uh, propane high efficiency boiler. Um, this boiler was factory shipped propane so we didn't have to convert it. It was installed in November 2016 so it was just under a year old. Um, so this is your combustion blower here and burner assembly with the gas valve. So to remove this there's a, a gas flex connector here. You can just break this free with a wrench which we've already done. Um, let's separate that and there's usually a, a lid that sits here it comes off for easy access with four Phillips screws and uh, certain models like the SL115 has uh, I think three thumb screws I just unthread and this pops off to give you access to the internals um, so the first thing we'll do is pull out the uh, flame rod and ignition assembly which is over here uh, on the left hand side of the blower assembly it's a Phillip, one Phillips screw take that out and then it slides straight up, oh sorry it's two Phillips screws And once you have those out, the uh, flame rod and ignition electrode pull straight out vertically. And you can disconnect the grounding and the spark boot. And what you do with this, you'll just grab a sand cloth and sand it down back to bare metal. Get rid of the um, that white oxidation that's on it. We'll set this aside for later. So the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, pull the uh, combustion gas valve assembly and the fan all out. Um, it comes out as one piece essentially. The first thing you do is you pull this vent off, this pipe. That's your uh, air inlet pipe for combustion air. And then there's six 10 millimeter nuts on uh, studs. I pulled off the two in the back already with a, a 10 millimeter wrench. The other ones you can get with a drill. So again, this will lift straight out. Just got to be careful of the gaskets. And then there's a, an insulator in here as well, which you got to be careful of the refractory, which is pretty fragile. So. And then also there's the wiring connections for the motor in the back, which you have to remove as well. So this is the burner here, so you can see it's got some dirt on it. Some of that's just the refractory from pulling it off. We'll vacuum this out after with a shop vac. Then there's the heat exchanger. You can see it's uh, pretty dirty. Not terrible, but... So to clean this, we've uh, disconnected our condensate drain line from our pump and put it into a pail. 
So what you do with this is you just grab some water and the uh, a firm bristle uh, poly brush, not uh, not a steel brush or a brass brush, and then you just put some water in it, and that'll clear out some of the trap too. So you just get it nice and wet, and then you just scrub uh, and you scrub it, and all that'll rinse out into the condensate trap below and run out. So once it's scrubbed, um, like I said, this one's just over a year, not even a year old, so it's not very dirty. Um, as you can see, all the, the stuff has been kind of scrubbed out into the water mixture. So we'll just rinse it real good with some, with some more water. Make sure it gets down all the flue passages. And all of this just leaves through the condensate trap out of the bottom. So it'll help flush your trap, but we'll clean this too afterwards as well. So it, uh, you can see what's coming out of there is not clean. So now we'll just take a rag and wipe down the debris that we scrubbed to get it over the heat exchanger. So as you can see, she's basically like new now. Um, if you do this on a regular basis, it'll never get to a point where it becomes impossible to clean. So these little openings here are all the flue passageways. So there's a fire tube boiler. So the flue gas is actually passed through these small slots and the rest of the uh, heat exchanger is filled with water. Um, other components on this unit, uh, we're not gonna record putting it back together. One thing to note though, is this uh, refractory panel has to be lined back up in the way it came out for the uh, spark assembly and the flame rod to, to fit back through properly. Otherwise you'll, uh, you'll damage this if you don't have it in the same orientation it came out, which is basically, um, this is on the left hand side, but you can pre-assemble um, this onto the burner upside down and then drop it in as one piece with the flame rod already installed on the burner plate which is what we're gonna do, but as I said, we're not gonna show that in this video. Um, so as far as the burner, it's very simple to clean. Um, you more or less just take a shot back, 
and suck anything off of the uh, this stainless steel mesh burner here. On the uh, Model 115s, it doesn't have the stainless steel mesh. It's just a stainless steel tube, uh, unless it's a propane unit. Every other unit has this mesh from the 160s and up on natural gas and propane. On the natural gas 115, it won't have this mesh. It'll just be a, a solid stainless steel tube. So let's vacuum this real quick. pretty much all there is to it. If you ever had to see uh, a really dirty combustion air using room air instead of direct vent, this unit's direct vented, chased through an old chimney. Uh, as you can see, the grays, the high temperature exhaust, the whites, the intake. Uh, if you use room air, you can actually, it takes a lot, but these fan blades can get dirty. Uh, it's Torx head screws, and you could split this housing and clean the fan blades if you had to by removing these uh, all the torques around the perimeter, but you have to remove the gas valve in that instance, which is uh, just a couple screws, Allen key screws here, and that'll come off to be able to access this last torque screw here. That's if you ever had to clean the actual paddle wheel inside of there, which you should probably never have to do if it's direct vented. <clears throat> so uh, other components to boiler system, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, this here is an air separator. So you want this, as well as your expansion tank, so this takes the thermal expansion of the water. Um, this half here is water, and this half here, there's a diaphragm uh, that takes the thermal expansion. When these burst, you can sound the difference. See, it's not hollow, and there it sounds hollow. So sometimes you'll have a relief valve blowing off, which is over here. This is blowing water onto the ground inside the house or the building. Um, nine times out of ten, that's because of your expansion tank diaphragm failed. And you could just quickly check the sound. So if it sounds like that on both sides, you just uh, change your expansion tank and that problem should be gone. Um, and then you have your low water cutoff. Um, the new G3 versions of this boiler have an integrated probe type low water cutoff. So you don't need to put an external, but this is a, a G2 model, so we need to put one. Um, basically if the water level drops below the uh, probe it kills the power to the unit so um, these have to be mounted above the lowest permissible water level of the boiler so as you can see here the uh, the wa lowest permissible water level because this is a high efficiency wall hung boiler is the top of the heat exchanger where the piping comes out you have to have a full heat exchanger so we mounted it just slightly higher with a couple 45s to make sure if the water ever does drop it's uh, protected so again coming back to the air vent and expansion tank in general you want these on the negative like the suction side of your primary circulator where the lowest pressure is um, that helps to draw the it's the highest temperature and lowest pressure so right on the supply before the primary pump and that helps the best for uh, eliminating the air. Um, on this system we have three zones. Um, so we have three zone circulators, supply returns coming back. Just a simple primary secondary system, uh, nothing fancy. Condensate is pumped into a uh, washing machine drain. So uh, these units condense quite a bit, so you definitely have to hook up this drain line. Uh, down here we have our backflow preventer and boiler feeder combination. Hard to see it's pretty dark in here uh, this is made by Combraco so sometimes if your relief valve blows off it's because this feeder valve has a um, there you go this feeder valve here may sometimes have sted sediment stuck in it which allows the pressure to slowly creep up and exceed the 30 psi and relieve so if the expansion tanks okay your next culprit generally is uh, this guy here um, so for cleaning the trap I'll just show you quickly. I don't have any more water, so I'm not gonna put it on the video. But uh, there's a metal clip here on top. You just undo this metal clip. 
right here and it's just a compression nut so you just unthread this compression nut here and slide it straight down and uh, anyways very brown from the heat exchanger cleaning so we'll uh, make sure this is clear As you can see, we don't have any blockages. If it ever gets plugged bad, there's another compression cap on the bottom and you can take out whoops, with an O-ring and you can clean out any uh, sediment that might be blocked in there. This one's very clean. Like we said it's only a year old. So other than that, you basically reverse the steps, close it back up. Um, safeties on this unit, we have uh, down here, this is a water pressure sensor. Uh, right here so this tells the boiler the pressure in the system it's a pressure transducer so it actually it's not just uh, on off it actually will give a PSI reading back to the control board um, which is a touchscreen control it's powered off right now for servicing um, right here we have a return water temperature sensor here we have a supply water temperature sensor this allows uh, basically gives the readings to the board to modulate this burner to maintain the set point based off outdoor temperature that it's looking for um, outdoor sensor is located on a north wall outside, which is generally what you want, that way it's never in the sun. Um, here's a, a high temperature limit. This is a, an external high temperature limit, just a pressure, or sorry, a temperature uh, thermo disc. We have a manual reset thermo disc here as well on the exhaust, on the flue. So if the exhaust temperature exceeds the uh, safe levels, it'll uh, trip and then it's a manual reset to turn that back on with the little push button. And in the back here, um, this was added in later models, I believe. Um, this is a rollout switch. So if your uh, gasket ever fails, that red gasket we took off, um, and flame starts to come out the back of this unit, it'll trip this. It's a rollout switch and it'll shut the unit down. It's also got a push button, but you can't see it. It's in the back. So that's pretty much it. There's one here as well. This is the pressure. Um, pressure sensor again it's not just a pressure switch it actually gives a uh, a value to the board so to modulate the fan speed as well as uh, it'll automatically detect the altitude where you are and adjust the burner accordingly for proper combustion at any altitude for testing combustion they have a, a factory threaded hole here in the unit so you can put your uh, combustion analyzer in here um, you want to run it up to high and then also on low and in the manual, there's values for target O2 and target CO2, as well as target CO on high and low. So once you have your high and low dialed in, it's uh, basically just a matter of, uh, it'll modulate between those points and you don't have to actually check the combustion anywhere between high and low as long as they're set properly. And to set them is on the gas valve as well. So, <clears throat> right here. There's the set screw that you can adjust uh, right here. So that's your adjustment for the uh, the fine tuning of the uh, unit on high and low fire. So we're gonna put this back together. Um, that's pretty much it.